All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to um, our demo theater using Arcade and your ArcGIS API for JavaScript apps. Um, just by way of introduction, my name is Christian Ekinis. I'm a product engineer on the JavaScript API. I've been involved with the uh, testing of the integration of Arcade and JavaScript, as well as the documentation of Arcade um, in its own um, SDK, as well as in the JavaScript API. Okay, uh, my name's Dave Bayer. Um, I also work in the um, JavaScript API team as a developer, um, and I worked a bit on the integration of Arcade into the JavaScript API. So um, if I start, um, what we want to do in this session is really give a sort of a high level of overview of what Arcade is um, and why you want, might want to use Arcade. And then we're going to sort of go and look at how you can use Arcade in your own JavaScript apps using the JavaScript API. Now, it's worth saying that this talk is a sort of a demo theater talk, so we're going to stay at quite a high level about what Arcade is and about, about the language. We have got another session on Thursday where we're going to do, do a much deeper dive into the language. Um, when we start talking about Arcade, we're usually asked a number of questions. And we thought for this talk, it would be the easiest thing to do would be to literally just go through those questions and, tr and try and answer them. So the first question we're usually asked about Arcade is, what is it? And that kind of got answered in the plenary when it was demoed by Jeremy. But the way we think about it is it's about a, a simple expression language that can be used in, across all of the apps and APIs in, that are in the um, ArcGIS platform. So it can be used in Pro, it can be used in the runtime SDKs, it can be used in the apps, the web apps, and it can be used in the JavaScript API. But what it is, it's an expression language that we want to sort of encode some of the logic of the map in. So we see it as part of the web map specification or the web scene specification so that you can sort of extend your map with extra logic. Now you already do quite a lot of that when you're sort of writing label expressions in, inside of Pro, but we wanted that kind of logic to be able to be used across the platform. And so that's, that's really what we're trying to do with Arcade. And you know, I kind of want to say what Arcade is not. Um, Arcade is not intended to be a full programming language or scripting language. It's intended to be very lightweight and simple. Um, another way of thinking about it is like a, um, a spreadsheet cell calculation. And in fact, that's very much how Arcade works. It's really like a calculator. It takes in a number of input values, it runs the logic of the expression, and at, at the end, you get a result value. And where you can use Arcade is in things like labeling or rendering, where you want to change the labels or change how things are rendered or vary the symbols. So that's you know, the kind of purpose of it. It's not trying to be a replacement for geoprocessing or automation. It's not trying to be any of those kind of full scripting languages. It's got a very focused, focused purpose. Now, it's, it's very customary with languages to do the Hello World demo. So I'm going to quickly dive into that and just show you a tiny bit of Arcade. I'm not going to really go into any detail at this point, but I'm just going to show you some Arcade. So, oh, wrong one. So. Um, what you should see on there is this is a, a landing page under developers.arcgis.com slash arcade. And in here is a very rich guide. It tells you what arcade is. It's got a guide about the language. It's got the function reference, which has got details of all the functions that are inside of arcade. But most importantly, it's got a very simple playground. So you can start writing arcade expressions and see what, see what happens. So I'm going to write my first arcade expression. So that is actually an arcade expression. If I click test, what you see, the result I get back is hello world. Now, there's some interesting things going on there. First of all, it's just one line. There's no kind of extra logic or function stuff. It's just one line. And that's where we see, a, you know, 80% of expressions that people write and have written for label expressions and things like that are just simple, very simple sort of um, formulas or just very simple expressions like that. Um, you can also do things, other kind of expressions. So if I just do 11, 10 plus 11 plus 20, it'll go down and it'll give you that result. 
But what we also realized with Arcade is that actually some expressions are really, really complicated. And so we wanted to give it the support for multi-line expressions. So I can create a variable and I can do use those variables. Oh. So if I look at the bottom there, you can see it's come out, hello David. So what you're seeing there is that Arcade can go beyond a single line expression and can be used with multi-line statements. Um, I could have written return there. So there's, if you're starting to write really complicated things, you can, the, the language is more expressive than it at first seems. Um, other things that you can do with the language is you can actually create functions. So I'm going to create a function. And if I test that, what you're seeing there is it's, it's called the function um, and so forth. So what, hopefully what you're seeing in all of that is that with, with the arcade language you can write very simple expressions, single one line expressions, but you can also do build much more complicated statements and multi-statements. And when you go to the guide, you'll see that there's, there's um, loop structures, there's it, a conditional statements, and there's a very, very rich library of functions that you can use with it. Um, in our Thursday session, we'll go much more into detail about the language itself. But hopefully that's sort of given you an idea of what Arcade is. If I go back to the slide deck now and go on to the next question, this is nearly always the se second question, why have we called it Arcade? I would like to say it's named after the arcade consoles, but it's actually not. It's named after, after an arcade as in a... Um, covered passageway. And there's many reasons why we've called it Arcade. Um, the first reason is we really needed a name. We were talking about it as this expression language, this language, and the t we just needed a name to give it. Um, the next reason was there's a bit of a history in Esri of calling things after roads or streets. We have the avenue language. I couldn't think of any other languages that we've done with that we've named after roads or streets, but we've also had internal projects named after roads or streets. Another reason why it's called Arcade is um, part of the development team, or a big part of the development team for Arcade, was based out of the Cardiff office. So it was felt there should be a slightly anglicized name. Um, so Arcade had that kind of anglicized feel to it. We did reject a number of other names, like Roundabout and other such things. Those quickly went out the door, and were rejected very quickly. Um, another reason why it's called um, Arcade was it kind of encompasses what we're trying to do with the language. Just very self-contained, very safe environment, very, you know, small and, and specific. Um, the last reason why it's called Arcade is because it had Arc in the title, and that just, like, sold it. So, anyway, that's why it's called Arcade. So, the next question is, why do I need another language? Now, this is a bit of a loaded question, and, you know, there is a lot of languages we could have chosen. And when I went on to Wikipedia to do that sort of language cloud, there was about 1,000, 2,000 languages that we could have chosen. But there's very specific reasons why we decided to build Arcade. And we kept on coming back to it as the only way of solving the problems that we were trying to solve. And to explain the problems that we were trying to solve, it's, it's worth, oh, that didn't move on. It's worth looking at sort of the ArcGIS platform. The ArcGIS platform is all about sharing, about making maps and sharing them to different groups of users. And we wanted people to have the ability to share maps with extra logic in, with expressions that could move with the map. And so we wanted a language that could be written and shared. But the problem with the ArcGIS platform is it runs on absolutely everything. It runs on desktops, tablets, smartphones. It can be embedded in social media sites. It can be running websites and browsers. And so to find a language that would run in all of those environments was a real a real challenge. And the sort of challenge was that, um, take, take the run times or running, running on a phone. Phones are very, are very particular about size. You want your application to be as small as possible. The thought of bringing down the Python runtime so that we could run our scripting expressions just really wasn't going to be acceptable. 
Or similarly, the same with the JavaScript runtime engine. And another problem with using those full languages is that they are fully capable. And so suddenly you enter a whole different world of security. And you know, suddenly people could be writing expressions that could be doing really bad things to the device and bad things to the, app and bad things to the application. So those languages didn't really work in the runtime environment, but they also didn't work in the browser environment. You know, trying to, you know, in the browser, you can only run JavaScript. I know we could call Python on a server, but if we're drawing 10,000 labeling features, the latency of calling into Python on the server wasn't going to be acceptable. Similarly, the thought of allowing JavaScript to be published and just, and just written up into your app introduces all sorts of security vulnerabilities, cross-site scripting. So all of these full languages just didn't quite meet the needs that we were trying to accomplish with the language. And so we set ourselves, I mean, we, we looked at a lot of languages and we were looking at very specific goals. First of all, we wanted the language to be portable. We wanted to be able to publish in pro or online and to read it in vice versa and for the map to come in with full fidelity of the logic that's been expressed. We wanted it to be secure. So we wanted no vulnerability to be introduced by us by having logic being executed in those environments. We wanted it to be lightweight. So we wanted it to be really simple to write and really quick to execute. So we wanted it to be really intuitive to write. And lastly, we wanted it to be um, geospatial. We thought if we are going to have a language, let's at least make geospatial a first class member of that language. Let's have the concept of geometry. Let's have the concept of features. And what we've tried to do with the language to kind of, because we are introducing a language, we wanted to make it as easy as possible to learn and use. So it is very like JavaScript. It is very like C style programming. Um, we've created a huge amount of documentation on that developer's website. We've also made the language a lot less fussy. So we've made it case insensitive, which is a strange thing to do to a language. But we wanted the language to work with data. And data, you know, SQL fields are case insensitive. But we wanted it really nice to be able to use those fields in an intuitive way. So these are the kind of things that have been driving how we've designed the language and implemented the language and documented the language. So I hope that kind of explains why we've gone down the route, the route that we have. The next question we get asked is, what can you do with the language? Um, and it's worth saying, first of all, there's what we can do with it today and what we're ultimately going to be able to do with it as we build it into more and more areas of the, of the ArcGIS platform. You know, can you use it for the classic tea making problem? So I think possibly the easiest way to show what you can do with it is to, is to give you a few demos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to start um, um, ArcGIS Pro. Now I should warn you, these demos were given to me, so I might be a bit uh, clumsy with how I show them because I'm not altogether sure of the data that I'm showing. So first of all, what we have here is um, a sort of a, a very um, common sample that we use for testing and demonstrating labeling. And what I want you to look closely at is the green, the green labels, which have got New York Avenue and, and Pennsylvania Avenue written on them. If I look at the um, labeling properties, what you can see there is that currently it's written in VB script. So I have a, now I don't know what all this VB script does, but um, it's basically proper casing the, uh, the label. Um, and it's taking in different fields. And there's, there's quite a lot of logic there to achieve a very simple task, which is I want a proper case label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that in Arcade. He said, I'm not going to write it in Arcade. I'm going to cut and paste it from another document into, Arca into here. Now, this is going to be a very unexciting demo because I'm going to click Apply, and nothing is going to happen. Um, but that's because it's kept the same, same logic of the expression. And I just want to show you that expression. It's literally done $feature.prefix, um, and it's used the function proper. A big part of Arcade is the library of functions that we've tried to provide with it. And we want to add more functions. So if you have any ideas for functions, please let us know. Um, and it's just appended the different fields together. One, again, one of the differences that we've done here 
is that you have access to dollar feature. Um, that's a global variable that's being passed in for this particular, uh, for the, for the labeling. Um, and the reason we've done that is because we wanted to uh, make consistent how it runs in pro, how it runs in online, how it runs in runtimes. And we wanted to make it consistent across the different uses of Arcade. So we've kind of put into these conventions. So that's a very simple one-line expression used for labeling. I'm going to go on to another demo. And this one is a Kogo demo. Um, we did, we, um, a number of months ago, we did a, a holistic testing of Arcade. OK. I've got to speed up. <laughs> um, we did holistic testing of Arcade. And one of the um, teams that came down was the Parcel team. And the Parcel team um, had some really complex labeling expressions. So, and what they decided to do was try and break Arcade by encoding their labeling expressions in. And I hope what you can see here is that there is a really complicated Arcade expression going on there, calculating bearings and, and all sorts. But Arcade is able to, um, to render that. And if I was to publish that, it would be available in on online as well. I'm going to have to speed up a bit, as I've got no idea how many slides I've got after this. Um, in this demo, what you see here is I have a class breaks renderer. Um, and if I go to, um, am I on label expressions? Oh, I am. Uh, where is, can you remember how I get to, I've forgotten how to get to this. Um, No, I'll tell you what, in the, in, the, uh, in the interest of time, basically there's a class breaks renderer and you can set that expression in the, um, in the, in the class breaks and use that as a value for your, for your rendering. What you can also do with this demo is you can set the rotation. So you can actually set a, the rotation of your symbol based on an arcade expression. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into online and I recently published that map um, if I go into my browser, what you can see here is I've got that same map. Um, I'm just going to move the time window because there's lots of overlapping time. What you can see is that same map but published in ArcGIS Online. And what I can also do is I can take the expressions that would have been written in, in Pro and I can go in and I can look at them here and you can see what this one's been written on is I can edit the expression that was used when I published it, and you can see that this is the expression that's being used in the value expression for the class breaks renderer. What I can also do, so I look at the options, you can see that all the symbols are rotated. There's an expression that's taken, that's calculated how the symbols should be rotated. So what you're seeing there is that A, we've got portability, and we've achieved the goal of sharing that map with full fidelity over to ArcGIS Online. But what you're also seeing is that we've encoded into the web map logic, you know, really scripted logic in how I'm wanting the symbols um, rendered, rotated, and how I want features labeled. And that's really, you know, what we've been trying to achieve with Arcade. So, what I'm actually going to do, do now is hand over to Christian, who's going to show you how you can use Arcade in your own JavaScript, uh, JavaScript apps. So, um, all right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip these demos in the interest of time. Um, I'll, we'll definitely go over them in the Arcade session tomorrow. We have a lot of examples um, for rendering and labeling. And if you can make it tomorrow night at 5.30, I really encourage it, because I think they're pretty cool. Um, but I'm going to switch over to my machine and just show you really quick this documentation for JavaScript. Um, we have, in the latest release, in the guide, we added a uh, guide page for Arcade. I encourage you to read it. It talks about what Arcade is very briefly, basic syntax, and where it can be used in the API. So essentially, Arcade can be used um, anywhere where you see a value expression property. So if I go to the API reference and I type in value expression, these are um, places. So in, in the 4x version of the API, it's only used in rendering. Um, I can uh, click value expression and see 
um, that arcade can be passed into that property of the renderer. So to demonstrate that, And uh, this is a, a predominance render I created in the 4X version of the API. What I have is a, uh, is a layer of US counties, and it contains three fields. One is um, the total number of registered Republicans, total number of registered Democrats, and the total number of registered independents or other third parties. Um, but what if you want to visualize the, uh, the party that dominates in that particular county on a county by county basis. Normally in ArcGIS Online what you can do is add a field and write some expression or calculation in order to do that. In some cases, many of you may be familiar with that workflow. You may have to do several field calculations and kind of work that into a workflow. But that can get convoluted. It can make your data messy. Um, if you screw up one of those, uh, those expressions, it can be really frustrating, you have to do it all over again. But with Arcade, it makes it really quite simple. So I have this app right here. It's a JavaScript app. And I've written an Arcade script that will take those three values and return a string indicating the maximum count or the, the highest count of, of one of those three fields. That script can be written in a separate script tag from JavaScript for readability purposes. So instead of setting the type to the default JavaScript, I can say text plain. Or you could do something more fancy like Esri Arcade. And that indicates to the browser that's reading this app that it's not going to execute that script as JavaScript, because it won't understand it. It's important to put an ID on this script so you can reference it within your JavaScript. So let's take a look at what this is doing. I'm storing each of those field values. You can see the names of the fields are not very meaningful, but I know what they are, so I'll give them meaningful variable names. And I'm going to push them into an array called parties. So I have three values um, pushed into an array for each feature. As Dave said, Arcade is a really simple language. So when people ask us, you know, why do you go to the trouble of developing a new language? Why do I have to learn something new? And my answer to that is, this isn't a difficult language to learn. It's very intuitive. It looks a lot like JavaScript, but be assured that it's not JavaScript. It, it won't, not all the functions behave the same. But it does give you co really convenient functions. So this function right here is called decode. And what this does is you can match up coded values with it. But I'm going to use this in a certain, uh, in this case of predominance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the max from that array. Max is another um, function um, given to you in uh, Arcade, and I'm going to take that value, the maximum value, and match it, see which one it matches with, Republican, Democrat, or Independent, and return a string indicating one of those parties. And that is the visualization I get. You'll see those unique values here in the, uh, in the legend. But how, does that, how do I reference that in JavaScript? So here's my typical JavaScript app, and here I'm going to grab that Arcade and save it to a variable as a string. I could write the arcade within the JavaScript portion of the app and use concatenated strings or something like that. In the end, it looks really messy. It's hard to read. And if I wanted to copy and paste this, this expression into Pro or ArcGIS Online, I could, whereas I couldn't do that if I were just using concatenated strings in JavaScript. Notice here that instead of a, um, um, writing down a field name, I'm just going to pass that. Uh, expression to the value expression property. The value expression title gives it a title, so that in the legend it, it conveys to the users what that is. And then I'm going to set up the renderer like I would in any other case. So I'm going to create symbols for Democrats, Republicans, and Independent. And then I'm going to go a step further and write another expression for opacity to indicate the strength of that party. And it's very similar. The first four lines are exactly the same. But instead of returning a string, I'm just going to get the percentage of the total of that uh, winning party. And that's why you get that uh, faded out effect. Those, those counties where it's not very clear, uh, it just shows that they're more contested, say, than these deep blue or deep red counties. So that's a, that's a pretty, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty uh, good demo of how you can use it for rendering. And as a final example, I'm going to open up this app in 3x. We don't really support uh, 2D labels, 
in uh, our 4x API yet, unfortunately, but we do in uh, our 3x API. And right now, as of the latest release, 3.20, Arcade is the only supported way to write label expressions. And so, I've written a label expression with four, well, I've actually written four label expressions, each in a different class for weather stations. And what's going on is that I can pass in simple values. So here, again, I'm, I'm just writing the arcade in a string. I don't need to put that in a separate uh, text, uh, or sorry, script tag. I'm just rounding the, uh, the temperature and appending degrees Fahrenheit. I go down, same thing with humidity, and um, also with the station name. Okay, we've only got a, we've only got a couple more minutes. So. All right. But I also have a more complicated expression here. And again, it's not that complicated when you look at it. I'm taking the wind direction and the wind speed, and I'm going to return um, a, a string that indicates the, the wind value. So um, we have a field called uh, wind direct, and that's not north, south, east, or west. It just says the compass degrees, which doesn't make sense to most people. They don't, if they see that the wind is coming from 202 degrees you know, um, then they're not going to uh, normally interpret that as southwest. So we're going to take that in a similar way as the rendering from the get element ID on the document and pass that to the expression property of the label expression info. And that will give us this visualization or this, this label expression. And notice that we're at zero miles per hour. I'm not appending a direction because I. Um, manipulate that with the arcade logic. Okay. And uh, switch me back. Oh yeah. So, basically, going forward with arcade, we want to increase the number of places where it's used in the RGS platform, and we want to add lots and lots more functions. So, please give us feedback on what functions we can add that will make life easier. A big part of um, using a language is the resources that are available. So you've seen resources on um, developers.archis.com slash arcade. That's a really rich guide to the language. And also in the JavaScript API um, sort of area of developers.archis.com, there's in details there on how um, you can use those properties to add in your own custom apps. And on this slide, if it changes, we've got some um, additional links to the playground and to some blog articles. And I'm going to change it. In, I've just, I see lots of people taking photographs, so I'll <laughs> wait two seconds. I'll tell you what, the next slide, it just says, please do give us feedback um, using the app and using the sheets of paper. And also, if you have any ideas or thoughts on what we can do with Arcade, please do, do tell us that as well. So I think probably, oh, sorry. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and close. We have another demo theater coming in two minutes. So we'll take your questions outside so we can allow the other presenters to come in. And again, if you have time tomorrow night, please come and we can have uh, more of a bigger discussion rather than this limited time. Thanks.